Hello everybody, Geeks and Gamers, this is Circuito back again doing another game video. That's right, I'm doing another one. It's been a while since I did videos and this last little strip I'm going to be doing a decent number of them. This is actually the fourth video I've recorded today, so you should be seeing more and more videos just about every day from me. Uh, but today I want to do a little quick review and talk about one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it came out a couple of years ago in its fourth edition and... Uh, I love it. I've played it more than anything else ever. No, it's not D&D. &D. It's Legend of the Five Rings. Look at that book. Sweet and slick, isn't it? It's a great book. It's a great game. Um, it's a game I've been playing for many years. I started out playing it back in 1996. Um... Uh, I believe the game first came out in 1995. believe. So, uh, I could be wrong. It might have come out in 1996. Not really sure. Um, I actually started out playing the, the card game version of this game. The collectible card game, which is still going strong. Uh, and then moved on into playing the role-playing game. Uh, what's great about this game is it... A couple of things. First is how rich the story is. Um... It is a story-based card game, um, in I guess sort of a living card game in a way. Um, it's still got the collectible aspect, but what I mean by living card game is what happens in the game, in the tournaments, uh, and even now they've started spreading that in, into the role-playing game. But what happens throughout the time that you're playing the game um, will start reflecting in the actual story of the game. Um, from the very beginning of the game, there has been a very rich world, uh, very rich history, and as the game has gone on, it's just been added to more and more and more. And players like you and me are actually affecting that story um, and changing things around so that it fits something more along the lines of what we like. Uh, the story, you know, the writers are still writing the story themselves, but things that we do will influence the story in certain ways. Um, what starts off great about this book is the first several pages, um, kind of flipping through here, uh, goes through till page about 24, is all history. History about the world, history about Rokugan, uh, what has gone before, so to speak. Um, just sort of basic information about different periods, um, which is a great thing because it gives you different periods that you can play in. Um, and then it kind of tells you a little bit. Wow, I'm sorry about that. Not sure where that one came from. But I apologize. Oh, wow. Anyway. Uh, and then we have a couple pages sort of about the... Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? That, that yawn just killed me. Really took everything right out of my brain. Uh, culture. That's what I'm looking for. And it has a couple pages about the culture of Rokugan. Because it is different. It is not your standard fantasy. Um, this is not a game where you're going to kill things and take their stuff. Um, that's actually a very bad thing to do in this game. Um, a lot of things that happened in the game are very much based on um, appearances and honor and how other people see you and perceive you. Perception is a huge thing in this game. Um, the like, uh, you would not kill something and then take its stuff, because in order for you to take its stuff, you'd have to then touch the dead thing. And touching dead things are, is a very big deal in this game. You do not do it. Touching a dead thing will definitely make you unclean. And if you're unclean, you have to cleanse yourself of that unclean cleanliness. Uh, and there's a couple of ways to do that, and probably the most common way to do that would be um, killing yourself. Ritual seppuku. Uh, that's a big way to cleanse yourself of any sort of dishonor. That's a major dishonor, and the only way to sort of, like, come back from a lot of things is to kill yourself. Uh, so that's a, a big concept in the game that a lot of people don't grasp. The politics in this game are usually difficult for people to grasp. Um, the way sort of things are adjudicated, for example. Um, like... One of the things that's big in sort of uh, Asian culture and history and things like that is the idea of the duel. And the duel being the end-all, be-all, uh, or be-all, end-all, I should say. I said it a little backwards. Um, 
of how to determine who is right and wrong. Uh, if there's an issue of any kind and you know, someone says you did something that you didn't do and you are not of a higher status than them, uh, then you have the opportunity to say, I didn't do it, and I will prove that by challenging you to a duel. And if you win, you did it. If you lose, you did it. Uh, it's kind of a weird thing that people really have a hard time grasping. Um, I'm running a game right now with a couple of people who have never really played this game before, and they're having difficulties getting a lot of these concepts. Uh, every, a lot of almost everything that gets said has a second meaning, a bit of an ulterior motive. Uh, they're always trying to get something out of everything that they do. Uh, everything is very political, very manipulative, uh, but also in a way very honorable, which is a strange dichotomy that is really honestly hard to grasp. And I understand that, but a lot of these people that I've been playing with and trying to show this game to uh, are kind of confused by that and don't really get it. Um, let's... Uh, so, but like you know, the first what thirty pages or so, thirty thirty five pages of this game are all sorry no fifty five pages I I read that wrong first fifty five pages this whole section right here is all about culture history background etc and then we get into uh, the next several pages which are all about the individual clans the way this works is that every single um, person, well, not every single, but most people, in most of the samurai, let's put it that way, are separated out into different clans. Uh, the, let's kind of start at the beginning, give you a quick overview. Right, basically what happens, sun and moon in the sky, they met at some point during uh, an eclipse or something. They had children. Uh, the moon felt that his, his new children could possibly take over his power base. Um, so he decided they needed to die, so he ate them all. Uh, the son, Amaterasu, uh, had hidden away her son, Hante. Hante. Yeah, Hante. Um, and then after the rest of the children was eaten, she trained him in the ways of the sword, and he faced his father, slid open his father's stomach, and, hit, and most of his brothers and sisters fell to the earth. Uh, one of them did not, and died. One of them that fell, fell way away from the rest of them, off to the end. Uh, and that's kind of important, but let's not, we're not getting into it now. The others fought for um, supremacy to see who was going to run this new empire. Uh, the empire that was already full of peasants um, that they needed to sort of gather. Uh, they had this big tournament. The winner was Hante, so he became the emperor. And emperor for many, 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 many years. All of his descendants were continued to be emperors. Uh, and then the rest of them decided that they needed to serve their emperor in some way. So they each went out and found certain types of people to join their clan and become samurai. And each clan had sort of a specific duty or goal in mind within their clan. Uh, the Crab Clan um, built a giant wall in the south of the empire to protect the, the empire from the evil that was in the southern part of the empire. A bunch of big evil demons called Oni and ogres and goblins, things like that. Uh, they built this wall to sort of protect the empire from those things, and as it tried, they tried to invade the Crane Clan. Uh, they are more about politics and honor. Uh, they sort of built the political system within Rokugan. Uh, they're also big on art. Uh, they're sort of perfectionists, I guess you could say. Uh, then we have the dragon, who are very mysterious and enigmatic. Uh, they're great swords people. The crane are also great duelists, um, just general in dueling. Uh, they're probably the best duelists in the empire. Uh, the Miramoto family of the dragon is big on dueling as well, but they're just great sword swords people in general. Um, but they're very much the the whole entire clan is about sort of uh, religion uh, and mis they're mysterious and you know they do things differently than everyone else. 
Uh, the Lion Clan are all about military and tactics. The best tacticians in all of the world, all of Rokugan, are come from the Lion family families. Uh, they're just huge warriors. The Mantis Clan aren't really a great clan. I won't get into it. It's sort of a thing with me. But uh, they're all about patrolling the seas. They're uh, sort of pirates and merchants and things like that. Uh, the phoenixes are they're all they're pretty much all about magic and knowledge. Uh, they're big scholars and sages, uh, all the best uh, Shugensha, which is what the magic users are called in this game, come from the Phoenix clan. Uh, the Scorpion clan are all about secrets. Um, their goal in protecting the empire and serving the emperor was to find out other people's secrets and protect the emperor's secrets. Uh, so they're kind of sneaky and underhanded. Uh, they're seen as dishonorable by the other clans when in actuality uh, they're, they're one of the more honorable clans purely because uh, they're able to sacrifice their own personal honor for the honor of the whole, I guess you could say. Hugely loyal, hugely uh, into duty. Uh, they just kind of pursue things in a different way. The unic Unicorn Clan were all about exploration. They were created and uh, started by Shinjo. They went out to sort of explore the lands outside of Rokugan. Uh, and they've just come back probably within the last couple of hundred years. So they're still sort of different than the rest of Rokugan because they have more uh, Western philosophies in some things uh, than the Rokugani do. Uh, for example, you know, the Rokugani, they don't eat red meat because they see it as unclean. Uh, whereas the Unicorn do eat red meat because when they ventured into the uh, deserts of the Burning Sands, it wasn't exactly easy for the, them to get a hold of fish uh, and other things like that. So they've created you know, a taste for the, within, within themselves for red meat and have started uh, eating that. And that's just kind of one, one of the things. They wear fur and things like that too, which, as I mentioned before, is a dead thing. And dead things usually getting touched is a bad thing. But with the Unicorn, uh, perception is a little different. Uh, there's also minor clans, and uh, there's Ronin, things like that also. Uh, but you should pick one of these different things and you create a character. Um, creating a character is fairly easy. You have everything's based on points. This is a character sheet. You'll see here at the top all these little rings and dots and things. Uh, what that is is your basic stats, your basic attributes. Uh, each ring and, and ability starts at a 2, and you spend points to raise those up. Um, then you take the, the number in your rings, you add those up and you multiply that by 10, and then you add the ranks of your skills and that becomes your insight rank. Your insight rank is what determines what rank you are. So you don't level up with necessarily just gaining experience. Uh, you gain experience points that you can spend on attributes and skills. Once those attributes and skills get to a certain point, you will be perceptive enough to learn the next rank. So you go back to your school, back to your uh, sensei, and he teaches you the school's next technique. Because you've actually practiced at this point enough to where you can now grasp the next technique. And then you're taught that and you can go on out and start using that technique. Uh, what I really like about this system a lot is it is a, a dice pool system. Uh, where The way it works is, like I said, you have a number up here in these abilities, and then you have a number down here in these skills. Um, you take the what, what you do is you take those numbers, and that's how many 10-sided dice you're going to roll. Um, for example, let's use an attack. Uh, that's based on agility. Say your agility is a 3. And then you take your weapon skill, which is most likely going to be Kenjutsu, because that's the skill that's based on the sword. And so let's say that's at a 3. You take those two numbers, add them together, you get a six. So you roll six dice. But what's interesting about that is you don't just roll those dice and add them up and you have your total. You only get to keep a certain number of those dice, but you get to keep whichever of those dice you want. Uh, in this case, you always keep your attribute. In our case, it would be agility. Your agility rank is three, so you're going to keep three of those six dice. Keep any three you want, doesn't matter, but you have to keep three of those dice. If you happen to roll the max on the die, a 10, then you re-roll that die, and you keep re-rolling it until you stop rolling 10s. You add all the results together for that one die, and that's 
one die. Then you add two more dice to it, and you're good. Um, so that's an exploding sort of die mechanic that I really like, um, that I've noticed in other games, but I first kind of caught it here in, uh, in Legend of the Five Rings, which I, I like it a lot. Um, armor does two things. It's, um, how hard you are to hit, and it also, um, sort of reduces damage as well. So it has a little bit of both. Uh, the standard, standard sort of AC of like a D and D, and then it's got a damage reduction of a game like GURPS. Uh, so it kind of gives gives you the best of both worlds there. I kind of like that a lot. Um, wounds are done a little differently. You don't just have hit points. You have penalties when you reach certain levels. Um, so for example, let's see, you start out at healthy, no penalty. After you take your Earth Ring times five wounds which your standard earth ring at first rank is probably going to be a 2. So once you take 10 wounds, then you take a penalty of plus 3 to everything you do. Um, then next time you take your earth times 2 wounds, for every rank past that, you get more penalties. So again, if you have a standard earth ring of 2, then for every 4 more wounds you take, you take more penalties. This is a very gritty, lethal system. Um... Because a, a sword, a katana, for example, um, its base damage is 3k2. Roll three dice, keep two dice. That's sort of the shorthand. And then you add your strength to that, but you don't keep that. So if your strength is three as a samurai, you're rolling six dice, keeping two of those. And, uh, you know, if you get your average on that, which is about a six when you factor in exploding dice, that means you're doing about 12 points of damage in one hit. So one hit's going to put you at a plus three penalty on everything you do. Everything you do. Next time you try to cut, hit somebody else, it's going to be three hard for you to do that. And then the, after that, every time you get hit, it's going to add two more penalties. So instead of plus three, it's going to go to a plus ten to everything you do. So... It gets really difficult to do things really quickly. It's very gritty. There's not a ton of magical healing in this game. There is some, but not a lot. And you don't really heal really quickly either. You heal um, your stamina times two plus your insight rank. Staying your stamina at this point is going to probably be about a two. And if you're rank one, that's, that means you're healing five wounds a day. If you're completely resting and not doing anything else, so it does have a gritty feel to it. It's very lethal. Um, I really like that aspect a lot. Um, the richness of the game and the history and the background is probably one of my favorite things. The way they do magic is awesome. Uh, they do have an advantage and disadvantage system, which I, I tend to like a lot in games that I play. So I think it really helps you with characterization. It helps you roleplay your characters a little bit better. Um, you have monks in the game, so you can play different monks. Uh, there's tons of different clan options. Um, there's, you know, a uh, school of a clan. Like, let's use this lion one right here, for example, because I just rolled, you know, flipped to it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but here's where your school starts. Kodobushi School. And then over here, you've got your techniques. There are five techniques. You go in order down you know, from rank one to rank five. Um, what's great about this game is they have two things that help you sort of um, make your character a little bit better. The first is what are called paths, where if you don't want to be the standard Okoto Bushi, Bushi is uh, a warrior, if you don't want to be the standard Okoto Bushi um, and you know, have these same five techniques as everybody else, well, you can take a path, and there are paths in the back, of this book and in other books that they've put out where you can replace one of these ranks with a new technique so you can be different than the guy standing next to you or even you know the other Akoto that's sitting across the table from you um, I think that's really awesome they have advanced schools that you can take um, where once you meet their requirements you can stop the school you're currently going through and go into the new advanced school. A lot of them are meant to go after the five techniques. Look, my cat's behind me. Say hi. He knows you shouldn't be up there, but 
I'm not going to stop doing the video to yell at him right now. So we'll just keep going and pretend he's not there and uh, not give him the attention that he wants. Let's put it that way. All right, so yeah, you can uh, you can make some really great characters with the game. There's a lot of customization, a lot of really interesting things. This game lends itself very well to people who like to role play, R O L E play, and not role R O L L play. Um, it's a great way to sort of advance um, people who like to R O L L play into something different. Um, because it really, there is a lot of stuff going on in here that's different than a normal game. Um, yeah, he's irritating me now. But anyway, uh, it's Legend of the Five Rings by Alderac Entertainment Group. It's a big book, and it's a gorgeous book. And it's a game I think you should try. So check it out. And, uh,. Try to see if you can maybe play a little bit next time with some friends or at your local gaming store or something like that. So, Sergito here, signing off. I hope uh, you guys enjoy your games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.